Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. And what you're looking at is an $80 eBay deal. Unfortunately, it cost me another $180 to get it shipped to me from California. Guy built me one heck of a box here. Um, anyway, let me get it open and we'll see what we have. So here we have it. This is my $80 engine and it was shipped in a hundred and eighty dollar crate so um just quickly it is an 85 or an 86 you can kind of tell by that so that's one good thing um well <laughs> that's one thing let's go with it that way i looked at the bottom the oil plug and all looks pretty good i want to show you in such a way that I don't dump it over. The bottom doesn't look cracked. All that looks nice. So that's all good news for me. Right. Neutral. So the transmission seems okay. It does, um, I just put my finger in here. The one-way clutch works and it does have starter gears. I am going to open this up and take a quick look in here to see what I have if one is dealing with parts right you very quickly realize as you're parting this out in your mind what it's worth the tail shaft that's worth the major part of a hundred bucks and I have a few engines without tail shaft so kinda of getting a tail shaft is a good thing this piece here is like a $25, the carburetor intake manifold. Not exactly dying for it, but wouldn't hurt. It does seem to have the stator. Uh, it's in, obviously it's in here. There's wires coming from it. Um, we won't know what kind of shape it's in until it gets torn apart. I want to be careful because dropping this engine overboard would <laughs> would really be bad sport um it the spark plug hole looks good the threads look good uh the story on it is somebody put this in a recycle bin out in california or was it washington it was washington washington state so this thing came out of a recycling bin in Washington State I'm not seeing any any bad news on it right there's no no death so I don't think anybody was in here so what I'm I tried to get this out this cap out it kind of comes halfway and stops and goes halfway and stops and I really I'm really nervous about putting um putting a starter to this until I make sure the engine is free to go around I might have to borrow the recoil starter from the other one of the other engines to turn it over but um, from first blush it looks really nice let's see what else we got on it so here are the starter gears they appear to be in nice shape they pulled the starter off for some reason and the one-way clutch right one way and then if it turns the other way it'll engage and turn over so it's, uh, it's working its way up it's becoming more and more valuable as we're finding these things in good shape unfortunately the engine is the kickstarter um, appears to be seized so I really need to get into the side here and work on it because I'm not either I got to get this cap off and turn it over or take the side of the engine off and turn it over and what's interesting is they did lift leave the shift lever but they went through the trouble of snapping the bolt off here. The shift lever isn't stripped, but they snapped the bolt off. 
And I can't, um, if you guys are familiar with these, there's kind of, um, in the center, there's a um, slot, so to speak. So when you put the bolt through, if, uh, <laughs> if uh, you, uh, and you snap it off, if you snap it off up a little ways, you, you can't get that out of there. So, yeah, I, I'm beginning to see why why they kind of ran into trouble they must have had trouble with the starter I don't know if they let it sit and it seized up it's an environmentally seized up engine or if it seized up because of uh, bad behavior I mean the exhaust manifold looks good the intake manifold looks good I'm I'm this looks like a running engine to me I'm just surprised it's fighting me a little bit getting between here and there I managed to get the shifter off. I just had to spread it a little bit and it came right off. So it wasn't, um, there wasn't a broken bolt. So add a good shifter onto the gears in here, the intake manifold, enough nuts and bolts to, uh, to rebuild one of these things. So, at this point, it is seized, but I'm hoping that uh, that's a temporary situation. I do have a 18-volt uh, quarter-inch drive, the Ryobi drive, that I really could be using to take this apart, but... Sometimes I just prefer to do it by hand. Kind of keeps the dexterity up. Right? Where were you giving fingers if you don't use them? There we go. Loose, loose, loose. The starter's are already out of this thing. So. Given that's the case, normally you can just tap it right here. Actually, looks like it's coming loose pretty, pretty easily. I guess we're going to find out together what kind of shape we're in. risky game here to take it apart and leave the bolts in because normally what happens is you end up dumping all the bolts on the floor but I'm going for it oh there we are I'm guessing environmental ECs. Where could I put this one? It'll be safe. Yeah. Notice I was careful about pushing this back in. That's if you're on the other side and the recoil starter starts to pop out, you really don't want to do that unless unless you have very bad luck so you really want to try to keep those in place offhand let me show you the inside of the engine and you guys are discovering all this right with me but it looks looks pretty clean right not too bad not too bad at all the flywheel's not wrecked I'm just going to put a, um, a box wrench on this. We're going to rock it back and forth, see if we can't get it to turn over. I already put a little WD-40 down there. So let's see what happens. Okay, got a wrench on it. 
Am I feeling lucky? Hmm. Now the question is do I just have a rusty ridge in there? You guys could see. A rusty ridge causing me trouble. I don't I don't hear a tapping sound. Like it's coming up against the valve. I think it's a rusty ridge. I'm going to work this back and forth and see if I can't get through it. Um, so, I think I'm going to loosen it up. I think I'm going to get this engine running. Honestly, folks, is Harvey the luckiest guy in the world? Check this out. One, two. Right? It turns out it had a little rust, rust spot that I had to get by, but you guys could see. All freed up and nowhere to go. Perfect. I'm going to put the cover back on. And you know what? I think I'm going to smash an electric starter into it. We'll check the compression and uh, we might just have a winner here. So what am I showing you here? I'm showing you, this is the pulse generator. See those connections? Where's my finger? There you go. See those connections there? A lot of times they open up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put my meter to this quickly and double check to make sure I have proper continuity to this. Just the looks of the way these are. This is kind of the old fashion. This is the first generation. Um ignition system so I mean they work but it is the old-fashioned one and one one hears funny sounds from their starter and all stop take this cover off and clean things up so I've hooked up the test leads to the green wire solid green wire no stripes and the um, the blue and yellow which tells me I'm hooked to the pulser and I'm getting 331 ohms which is right on the money that's what I expect somewhere around 3 350 400 so perfect um, it's good this thing is ready to go back together again so it just so happens that I did buy that spare starter this is supposed to be going on the 250 SX but it's not bolted to anything yet. Let's smash it into this thing. There we go. That O ring was fighting me a little bit. Huh? Not bad. Not bad. Oops. Remember I mentioned putting those bolts in the wrong place. Two long ones. We're getting right up close to a uh, compression test. You guys know when you tighten these things, you're really supposed to you know, just bring them down to a little bit snug. 
go across. These two really should have been torqued, you know, in sequence with the um, with the cover bolts. So Harvey's bad not doing it that way. Everybody's got a little different technique. These are small. I'm sure they have a torque spec. I normally just go wrist tight on these. Um, I have to dig up two bolts to put the starter in. So I got to fish around a bit. Stay tuned. Okay. I have the jump pack hooked up and I'm going to turn this thing over. Let's see what happens. Listen up. Had a little nastiness come out of that spark plug hole. Like a lot of nastiness. I'm going to turn it over a little bit, try to get all that out of there. Then we'll throw the compression tester on it. Let's see how the compression comes in. Could you guys see that? Yeah, I guess you can. 60. Not great. And I would call this a wet compression because I obviously have some WD-40, some water, some bad news in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these off and just double check to make sure the valves aren't too tight. Okay, let's see what we got for the valves. Start out with the intake. You know what? There's quite a bit of quite a bit of play there already. Though from the rust, the valve might not be closing all the way. So I'm just gonna loosen that up a little bit. And what'll happen is it'll open it, and then this will get out of the way, which will kind of thwang it closed a little more. I am going to attempt to turn it over. I thought I noticed a little misting out the intake valve, and that's normally... This one's loose too, but you know what? I'm going to loosen them both up another hair. Um, because the other thing I've done, and it worked out pretty well on the engine that was seized, I kind of tapped on that a little bit right both sides and when you tap on it it kind of opens and closes really quick that that might hmm. I'm just gonna loosen them up a little bit then I think we're gonna smash a carburetor on it and see if we can't get this thing to start okay these are loose now I mean we're talking slap clap and loose let's see if it's improved the in compression at all I'm going to put the caps back on, set the camera up, we'll take another look. Okay, all loosened up. Let's see if it made life any better. It actually did. I'm at about 65. under 70 I'm uh, I'm gonna give it a shot 
I'm uh, gonna hook everything up to it and we'll give it a try. So I'm putting oil into the engine and I'm looking at that and I'm looking at that and I'm like isn't there an oil line to oil the head? And the answer is oh yeah there is. So I gotta go find me one of them. Now this is sketchy. So we have the jump pack hooked up. No surprise there. This is the portable CDI system. I found an oil line downstairs that was bent up. I kind of bent it back into shape. Got the choke on. Got the CDI box on. Let me uh, pop this into the stand and we'll give it a shot. See if it starts, see if it smokes. See what kind of trouble we can get into. So you're looking at the back of the engine. And let's zoom in a little bit. And I'll try not to put my head into the way. The exhaust is in the front. The choke is on. We're going for it. is a little shaky. So I'm gonna give it just a little who to starting fluid. I think a little more throttle and she's gonna start. Might not be enough, but I think I need some throttle means I need a throttle cable. Hang on, we're getting there. So, ooh, one doesn't, ooh. <laughs> one doesn't want this getting stuck. We're getting a little sketchy here. All right, another try.
Now that was sketchy. <laughs> so, what is this? This is an engine from a scrap bin in Washington. It came here. It was $80. It was another $180 to ship it. So I have $260 tied up in it. Uh, it was partially seized. We managed to unseize it. We smashed a carburetor onto it. Um, <laughs> we actually managed to get it running. I don't know. I think that's an amazing for a day's accomplishment. And in the meantime, do me a favor. Thumbs up if you liked this video. If you didn't, give me the old thumbs down and tell me why. I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye. By the way, after this thing started and ran for, I don't know, 30 seconds, the compression went up to, <clears throat> what is that, 85? Just under 90? Not bad.